Bob, thank you so much for coming up here and to share your testimony. Uh, yesterday, you shared a lot about how you received Christ, but let's just talk specifically on your salvation. How did you get to know God, and what was your journey like? <laughs> yeah, I'm going to try to sum this up real quick. <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah, it started out with, uh, um, you know, I mean, back in the 60s, I got involved with uh, with some people that were producing a massive amount of LSD, and they started a cult, and it was, and it was based on Eastern religion. So that, that, and they really were, many of them were very sincere, thinking they were going to go ahead and make the world better through uh, chemistry. But anyway, you know, so, and we surely, these people had an Eastern uh, religious mindset, you know, like Hinduism and Buddhism. And they, and they believed that the kingdom of heaven was in, in this vast nothingness out there. And, and it's the, the, the key was to empty out. And then, then you're going to go ahead and be enlightened. And then you're going to go ahead and find the kingdom of heaven. And uh, so that's what they, they trained me to do. To fast for three or four days, go up to the mountains around Big Bear Lake and up there in, around L.A. And, and then uh, take a massive amount of LSD. And, uh, and I really believed I saw God. Okay, but it was, uh, you know, from there it went on into, um, I, I embraced Hinduism, I went to the Fiji Islands, I studied with a Hindu priest, lived with them and his family, and, uh, and, and, and began to meet all the, the, these different Hindu gods. They would, they'd be hanging around the temple, and I'd be going ahead and uh, getting to know them personally, they would relay messages for the priest to me, and... and and, and give me instructions. There was supernatural phenomena going on right, left, and center. There was, uh, you know, there was a fire walking ceremony where people walked barefoot through hot, hot coals. So I was thinking that was going to go ahead and that was going to bring me into enlightenment. So I managed to go ahead and, and, and partake of the ceremony and actually walked across uh, the, the hot coals barefooted, made it to the other side, and, and then I'm thinking, okay, now it's enlightenment. Well, from there I went to, I went to, I ran out of money, so I ended up in New Zealand and uh, where I could get some work. And then I was thinking, okay, instead of being free, a depression came upon me, an emptiness came upon me that was so, that was so, like I'd never experienced before in my life. Instead of, instead of joy, peace, and love, it was just a, a deeper emptiness, you know, a great void. And then, uh, so, then I got hooked up with an organization called the Church of Scientology. I became a licensed minister of the Church of Scientology in, in Auckland, New Zealand for five years. And finally found out that this was not the answer. And, it was, and, and uh, came back to the United States, totally confused. All, I thought I was going ahead and, and achieve enlightenment. The thousands of hours sitting in caves in third world countries and villages, and, and here I am, just a, just a confused 30-year-old man. Well, then I met my wife, and, and here's, here's, here's the key to this. We've been married 40 years. We did her, we did her burial service, her, her, her memorial yesterday. And, uh, and, and it, it, it became so clear to me that in 1979, we had just been dating I was living in Portland. She was in Seattle. She came, she came down from Seattle on Thanksgiving. We baked a turkey. I was carving up the turkey. I come back, and all of a sudden, she's in my living room, and she's completely prostrate on the ground, crying crocodiles, tears. And I said, what happened, honey? And she said, well, Jesus just appeared to me. And he, and he just, and she was going through an ugly divorce, and she was going through a horrible experience herself at that time. So we were both hurting units, and, 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 and it was a short time after that, that all of a sudden it's like things were kept going wrong. I said, Did I, not? You know, I talked to God, but I believe that Jesus actually intervened right there. He, he touched my wife mightily in 1979. Just, just a matter of weeks later, he says, you, I got an assignment for you. I want you to take care of this woman. You know, so I did. And I've been taking care of her for 40 years now. And, and, and that was the key, because I, everything I had been involved with, I mean, I can go on and on and on, but everything I had been involved with was spiritual darkness, and the holds that it had on me, and, and, the, and the stranglehold it had on me, 
And, and, but because she had that experience, and then I was true to that assignment, and I was true to a second assignment, and that was to go ahead and, and go into the prisons and reach, reach prisoners. And, and I was, I've been true to that, just an evangel, evangelical outreach to the prisons for 26 years now. So it took both those things, and it, and it took my it, the picture that he showed me was like I was like a kite who had just flown out into a vast empty nothingness, but she had she had the string, and she had the, she had the she had you know, and she was she was anchored. There's no way I could I could seduce her into a counterfeit Jesus Christ. She had the real thing because she met the real thing, and 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 she she. You know, her and the Holy Spirit and, and the work in the prison ministry, it kept pulling, pulling the kite down, pulling the kite down. And then finally in 19, there was a massive deliverance that, that took place in me. And, and I had five men restraining me to the floor. And at that time, I was, I was chanting the same Hindu chants I chanted in 1973. And, I, and all of a sudden, I realized that that Hindu God had been lingering all these years. So the bottom line is this, church. There is spiritual darkness, and there's counterfeits coming from every different direction. And right now, what's on my heart, and, and, and as I see revival going on, I also know all the different counterfeits that are out there. I see, I see how they, they come sneaking in, you know, and, and, it's, and they're coming through the emerging church. They're coming in through so many different directions into the co co Christian community. They're coming through. They're coming through they, they've already impacted our culture to such an extent that the culture is now coming into the church. And the whole thing is just getting completely, you know, mixed up with Eastern religions and, 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 and those techniques. So my heart and my passion is that this be clean, this be clean and this be clear of all that. Be free from all, all of that, Amen. you know, and, and, and that it be the pure Holy Spirit that manifests with, with no impurity and no counterfeits whatsoever. And that's my heart, church, and that's what I'm praying for. And I'm going to do everything I can to go ahead and, and try to protect what's happening in this church. And, I'll, I'll be, and, and, and I'm locked in with you, and I, and I just want to thank you for the love that you shared with with uh, on my on my wife when I bring her in that wheelchair and six or seven or eight of you would be praying for her that never happened in any other church we went to and she loved this church and she loved you guys and I thank you from the bottom of my heart for everything that for all all the love that you poured in, into her and 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 she's in glory right now Amen. And I better stop talking no you did good you did so good Amen. Come on, you guys. I would say this is the... Yeah. You, you know what Bob said yesterday? He said that, uh, you know, we were at the funeral. He says, I'm so happy she finished the membership class at Hungry Gen before she died. <laughs> I'm like, I don't think that matters now. He's like, I know, but... Because she was on a wheelchair, so she couldn't go up uh, upstairs for the classes. Then we switched the classes, having downstairs. He's like, she finished them like how many months ago? Uh, just a couple of months, ago. Couple of months yeah. ago. Yeah. He's like, she's a, she went to heaven as a member of Hungry Gen. <laughs> <laughs> so, become a member before you die. <laughs> it's very important. Okay. So perfect timing. Please keep uh, standing with the support that Bob and Helen brought to the church. I mean, truly, as he said it perfectly yesterday, she was just a light. And we just want to be that church continuously and just be praying with them, supporting them, whatever your heart leads to do on financial or just on a time basis, just to reach out and just to keep supporting on this rough time. So. Uh, church, I'm asking and inviting you guys just to stretch your hands to him and just bless him and just ask God for the grace and the mercy and the comfort at this time. God
God, we just thank you so much for Bob and the ministry that him and Helen have brought and will continue to do so, that he's so faithful even coming to church to this morning after the memorial. But God, we thank you, Lord, that your hand is on him, that your hand was on their relationship, Lord, and we just invite your comfort, your grace, your supernatural touch, Lord, and that, Father, you will bring your comfort, your mercy, and your grace onto Bob and the family that has been impacted by this, God. And so, Lord, we thank you, God, that you're so faithful, that you're so good, and that we can never question your goodness, God. So we just come under your strength, under your mercy, and under your comfort this morning in Jesus' mighty name. And we thank you, Father, for Bob and Helen's faithfulness in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Thank you for watching this content. I know this was a blessing to you. We would like to ask you to subscribe to our channel and click on the bell on our channel so that each time we upload something, you can be notified. Don't forget to share this content with your friends and family and on social media. We're so thankful to you. Better is not good enough. The best is yet to come.